Obasan Joy is known for writing letters and raising alarms. He is a friend today, an enemy tomorrow. Yet, he cannot be crushed. Why? If I do, you know why? Well, I don't know why, Edmond, but I know he's also a man who likes self-exhibition and he constantly wants to be in the news. I also see him as someone who understands his position as a shaper of public discourse and he lodges on that seriously. But then again, he has been writing letters since the 60s and it has been argued um, once that um, one of his letters led to the toppling of a particular government such that you cannot cast his letters aside. But the problem now is the contradiction you encounter between this letter writer and the personality as a politician. If you weigh both, there are contradictions. So usually the best way is to look at the message and not the messenger when it comes to Obasanjo. And his recent letter is very timely and apt. While I disagree with some of his postulations in that letter, I would also um, accept the merit of the letter as calling attention to the level of insecurity we have in the country and the need for the government to act now. He said in the letter, this issue can no longer be ignored, treated with nonchalance, swept under the carpet, or treated with coddling glove. The issue is hitting at the foundation of our existence yes. as Nigerians. Yes. And as our Nigerianness is fast eroding. Yes, that is very true. Um, if you look at what is happening now, you would realize that people, you know, are claiming ethnicity first before claiming the national um, profile, which is Nigeria. Um, and if it continues like this, it could devolve into what happened in Yugoslavia or Rwanda. So I think it is apt that this is coming now. And like you said, there is this nonchalance that you find, you know, amongst not only, um, not only the president now, but amongst his um, kitchen cabinet. Ideally, you would want that aggression. You can't keep on killing people and then you have a silent government. But it seems as if there is a lull and it seems it is deliberate, as if, as if they are waiting for it to, you know, die down or perhaps continue. So that is the problem, really. He says, I'm very much worried and afraid that we are on the precipice and dangerously reaching a tipping point where it may no longer be possible to hold dagger at bay. Well, that's not new, Edmond. Um, Nigeria has always been dancing on the precipice. I think it was Carl Mayer that said that it never topples over, but the constant position is on that precipice. As with every other thing in the country, it always seems as if we are dancing on the precipice. But the problem this time around is that it seems that the present administration, you know, is even foiling the embers. That's, th that's the problem. It seems that it is, um, you know, prioritizing a particular ethnic group above others. And I feel that in such instances, you know, someone like Obasanjo is apt to call attention to the fact that at the end of it all, this is one nation and all the ethnicities must be respected. He goes on. The main issue if I may dare say, is poor management or mismanagement of diversity, which, on the other hand, is one of our greatest and most important assets. As a result, very wondrous cloud is gathering and reign of destruction, violence, disaster, and disunity can only be the outcome. Yeah, he equally said that when he wrote um, a particular letter to Good Luck Jonathan, I think titled, The Time to Act is Now. 
I think he wrote that in 2015 or 13, just before 2015, just before the elections. And he talked about the fact that we must embrace our diversity. The problem I, however, have with that letter is trying to say that the insecurity challenges we have in the country presently, you know, is as a result of the Edgemon Boko Haram that we never confronted Edmund, um, mm -hmm. Ed on. That is wrong. If we trace it back, we've always had crises of different sorts. And we cannot remove them from the misgovernance we've had in the country, of which we can absorb the, uh, the person writing the letter himself. So he's also part of the problem. If you're Lua Poa Denis on State Affairs, tell me what you feel about Obasanjo's letter. If Obasan just suggested that we need a kind of talk yeah, to build a consensus, yes. you agree with him? Yes, I do. But it shouldn't stop at the level of talks, Edmund. We've been holding talks for so many decades, and it hasn't led anywhere. You know, it should also translate to policy formation. You know, it must reflect in our laws that must be implemented. And it should also reflect in the material conditions of the people. So it's not just about talks. Let's listen to Chief Tola Adini. That's how he describes Obasanjo. He's a very intelligent man. Well, he is. I mean, people say he's native intelligence, and that's a word I don't like anybody using. There's nothing like native intelligence. When you are intelligent, you are intelligent. That's not like a native intelligence. He's good at reading the future. Uh, Obasan John is not an ordinary human being. How do you mean? We have to give that to him. He is, I think it's a special breed. I mean, with all the faults and frailties, with, he could just brush everything aside and go on as if nothing has happened. Obasan John is a special breed. I think, I don't believe in Christian God, but I think his Christian God loves him. Obasan John giving his citizens, giving his circumstances surrounding his birth, giving his low education startup and so on, to have achieved all that he achieved, to have gone this far in life, I think we should give credit to that speciality that he is, that he's a special being. And he's not someone that anybody can destroy. State Affairs with Edmond Dobilo is live. It's not someone anybody can destroy. Yes. That is Chief Tola Adeni there. Well, I agree with him. Obasanjo has been extremely lucky. Look at the good health he enjoys. Hmm. The good health. Join the conversation before we go. Hello. Hello, Edmond. Good morning, Reverend Koi Ladele. Good morning. I'm so beautiful to hear my darling's voice, Ife Uluapo. Uh, let me start with you, Ife. In 2019, we made a choice between character and corruption. And that is why we voted Buhari. But let me leave that aside. I don't want to discuss about that now. I've said a lot about that. Edmund, you asked a very important question when you are talking to the prof. We have not found an answer to that question yet. I want to attempt. And the question is, what should President Buhari do? Do you remember you said that? Yeah. What should President Muhammadu Buhari do? If you have put that question across to me, I will say, at this juncture where we are, with the chaotic situation all around us, President Muhammadu Buhari should, as a matter of urgency, constitute a national peace commission. Don't tell me we have one. We don't have one. Don't tell me there is one Abubakar commission. It is not functioning. I'm talking of a peace commission that cuts across the federal, the state, and the local government. It must constitute members who are patriotic Nigeria. They must not be of patriotic Nigeria. They must not be bigots. It's not just anybody that can serve on that committee. People that can serve on that committee are people who want Nigeria to work and develop. People believe in a united Nigeria. People are... 
who do not have allegiance to any political party. People who understand what love entails, which is lacking in Nigeria at the moment. People who are matured, not knowing, I suggest 30 years ago. People who are ready to sacrifice their time without monetary reward, they should not be salaried. People who want Nigeria to matter. Edmund, I want somebody like you and somebody like me to sacrificially serve in such a commission. President Buhari should immediately now constitute a National Peace Commission. I don't agree with another national conference. Like Isao Lua said, we have had one too many. Let us have a commission that will promote peace. Peter said, pursue peace with all men. That is what we need in Nigeria now. Thank not you. with Nigeria. Thank you, Reverend Koye. Who is the next caller? Say hello to the radio station. 08 080-596-98678. Hello. Hello, good morning, Andrew. Yes, good morning. Please, Akibolu, she reminds me. Akibolu, good to hear your voice. Yeah. I, in fact, I want to follow us this morning. In fact, she made my day for today. Because... I believe that I am proud to the general election and I think she was one of the promoter of Asian Bari. But she is sincere enough to come and tell us that Nigeria made the mistake to elect her president. But many of the very, many of the approaches of this presidency, they like that integrity. They like that integrity, that objectivity to come out and say that President Bari has paid us. They are still maintaining the, that president is going the right way and leading us to the right way. And we, we all of us, know that we are, we are at the brink. And somebody just said something like that. He recommended himself. I said that because he never been recommended for anything to do with Nigeria. Because you know his opinion, you know where he is coming from. What a a Kimbolu, a Kimbolu, let me call you to order. Hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, I'm here. You see, we cannot have the same opinion. A state where people think alike, that state does not have a shepherd. Koye has okay. his ideas, and you have your idea. And you cannot yeah, say yeah. he has no right to serve in any commission. I disagree with that. But somebody that said that is not in the bag No, he is a Buhari a fan, and, and he has the right to choose who he wants to support. Okay. And you have your right to but choose who you I want to support. Saying, but don't say he has no right to participate in national development. All right. Yes, that's the point I want to make. Don't make that you know that we suggest it. Don't make that you know that that is personal belief, that is personal opinion is not general. I can that person be There is no there is no general opinion. Akin Bolu is your opinion general. Reverend Koye disagrees with you. So what happens? Does that mean you have no right to serve in any commission? But let me just conclude here. All right. What I want to think that what the government needs to do is to present himself as a nationalist. It will show to us that he is not a nationalist. He is not a nationalist. He has a favor one, 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 ethnic to other. Let him come out and show that it's for all. Thank you. All right. If ever we have to go. Yes. Edmund, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to react to some of what he said. Yes. You know, my past as someone who supported Buhari haunts me, even to your date. Okay. But the good thing is, we must always acknowledge sometimes wrong predictions and prognosis if we are sincere and genuine. I think then Buhari was sold to us as um, the anti-corruption Caesar that we needed at the point that Nigeria was tipped in deep corruption crisis. Or you helped to sell Buhari as that person? Well, I was pro-Buhari at that point. But maybe the mistake I made was to speak about him in absolute terms. Mm. You don't do that as an intellectual. And I think someone like Obasanjo also did that. But again, the truth remains that when you see something that is not good, you must own up to past 
utterances and mistakes and correct them. And I won't stand here to say Buhari is the best option we have for this country today. In fact, I think it's a slap on the faces of all the intellectuals in this country, all good-loving Nigerians, that that is the person that is a present, um, you know, administrator. I feel Nigeria has gotten to a level where we either make it or perish. Outside of this climb, people are fighting other battles. They are racing, you know, there is the, um, the race against who controls data and artificial intelligence. We've not even gotten to that level at all. We are still in the Christ fund foundational issues, you know. And with this government, it doesn't appear that anything is going to change. So I don't see um, any redemption in this government. And I hope to be proven wrong, Edmund. All right. That's the follow up, Boadini. We'll do it again next week, Saturday. The program is State Affairs.